Oh, how did it feel to win the Tetrahedron Prize? Uh, thrilled, excited, surprised. Uh, the Tetrahedron Prize winners have always been heroes of mine in chemistry, and consequently it's um, a humbling experience to be now among that group of award winners. Um, some may recognize that the Tetrahedron publications have a special place in my heart. Uh, having served on the board of editors for 25 years and stepped down in 2015, um, I helped found one of the, its journals, BMCL, helped champion what was the introduction of a sister journal, BMC. And so it's an extra special um, event for me to be the recipient of the Tetrahedron Award. Um, it's also a great um, tribute to the terrific colleagues that I've had the opportunity to work with through the years. And so um, this award's for them as much as it is for me. Probably what we're best known for is our total synthesis of complex, biologically active natural products. The design of new synthetic strategies or the invention of new synthetic methods for use in the natural products, in fact, tailored for the natural products that we're targeting. And then with that technology in hand, the extension of those studies to the preparation of analogs of the natural products that contain deep-seated changes in their structure. That's not derivatives of the natural product or simple modifications, but deep-seated changes in the natural product structure with the intention of um, answering fundamental questions associated with how they interact with their biological target or fundamental questions on their structure and function properties. That is with the use of well-designed analogs, we can interrogate how the molecules interact with their biological target in, in the end, ultimately define how structure relates to function, sometimes how structure relates to uh, reactivity, and um, in the end, how that impacts biological activity of the natural products. Uh, well, this is something that um, we've been involved in since my career began. It's the reason I was so excited about first our move to, or my move to, the Department of Medicinal Chemistry at the University of Kansas, and later to um, the Department of Chemistry at Scripps Research, was this opportunity to carry out interdisciplinary research uh, spanning not just the field of chemistry, but biology and medicine. What inspired me as a young scientist, it's really what still inspires me today. It's the ability to use chemistry to ask fundamental questions about nature and life itself. The how does photosynthesis work? Um, what is the role of cofactors in enzyme catalysis? Um, what's the origin of diseases? And how do drugs act and the mechanisms by which they exert their effects. These are all fundamental questions that can be asked and answered using the techniques of chemistry. Um, and it's probably, probably the, the most important program that we've addressed throughout my career. It's our work on vancomycin and the re-engineering of the vancomycin structure to be active against resistant bacteria. Vancomycin is an antibiotic that's been used in the clinic for over 60 years now, and that's pretty remarkable that an antibiotic would last that long in the clinic. Um, resistance to vancomycin has begun to emerge. Um, it's become a serious problem. Um, probably everybody uh, knows someone or perhaps a family member who's had to take vancomycin for resistant or refractory bacterial infection. Um, and so the emergence of resistance to vancomycin is um, a serious threat to, to us all. Our work uh, first addressed the underlying molecular basis of the vancomycin resistance. It's a single atom change in the molecule that disrupts the binding of vancomycin to its, to its target. 
Um, we re-engineered the vancomycin binding pocket, a single atom change so that it now binds the altered uh, resistant bacterial target. Uh, and the magical thing about it and the subtle thing about it is that even with that single atom change and the compensating change that we made in the structure to overcome resistance, it still binds its original target. It's a beautiful problem in molecular recognition. And with that, we hope to reinstate um, the activity of vancomycin for um, another 50 years of use in the clinic. Now, subsequent to that work, we um, took on and accomplished um, additional things. We added to the periphery of the structure um, a modification that added an independent mechanism of action for vancomycin for killing bacteria, and that's independent of the original mechanism of action. And then we discovered yet a third peripheral modification that introduced yet a third mechanism of action for vancomycin to kill uh, bacteria. And these mechanisms act synergistic with one another, improve potency, and enhance the durability of the molecule. Um, so the hope is, the aspirations are, that such molecules, which we've just begun to explore, uh, will display clinical lifetimes that's measured not in years, as is true of typical antibiotics, not in decades, which is uh, a rare occurrence, and maybe even not just the half a century of vancomycin, but that such molecules would have clinical lifetimes that would last for centuries. Now that is pretty spectacular. Now my grandson, he was 10 at the time, asked me about our work and what we were doing because he had heard that I was so excited about it. Um, asked me to explain it to him, and of course he already knew a little bit about it. Um, and so I explained it to him, spent about 10 minutes, and he understood it. Of course, I think he understood it even before I explained it to him. And at the end of that conversation, he looked at me and he was beaming, and he said, I have a name for this molecule. And I said, really? What's the name that you came up with? And he said, you should call it Maximiacin. And I said, good name. That pretty well describes what it, it, it's capable of doing. And we continued to talk for a few minutes, and then I realized, recognized, I said, wait a minute, your name's Max. The truth is, it's really the origin of why we're doing the work, is it's a gift to our grandchildren, um, an antibiotic that will be there um, assuredly for centuries to come, we hope if it lives up to expectations. And it's really for them that this work is being conducted. And so to name it Maximiacin, which I hope we get a chance to do, um, is a tribute not only to the properties of the molecule, but to my grandson, Max. Yeah, the problem selection is extraordinarily important. Um, the chemistry that you choose to take on um, has to be equally exciting and compelling um, and tailored for the problem that you're trying to address. Um, and we like to think in our own efforts that um, the work that we do is um, unique to our efforts, something that only our group and we could take on and, and dare to try and take on and accomplish. Um, it is a difficult question. It's probably the most important thing that we do is the choice of the problem that you address and its importance and impact. And I would say that's the one thing that we probably need to teach um, young graduate students and postdoctoral fellows is how to make that selection of a, of a problem. Um, I think last year your award winner, uh, Peter Schultz, mentioned that that we are great at teaching students how to solve problems. Um, probably the next frontier in education is teaching students how to select problems, um, not just solve them.